Okay, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to, uh, are we called Batch 9 or Batch 8? Yeah, Revit Combo Batch 9. Okay. My name is Aris. I'm your uh, Revit instructor. I've been uh, teaching here in uh, Icon and in Focus for the last, you can say, two years. Teaching Revit, Architecture, Structure, MEP, and also Civil 3D and uh, AutoCAD, no? 3D Max also, sometimes when there are some students. So uh, I just want you to introduce yourself to me and of course to everyone. I already know Muhammad, but please introduce yourself to the rest of the guys. Muhammad, <laughs> Just say your uh, your name, and if you want, you can tell where you are working and uh, why do you want to uh, why do you intend to learn Revit for what reason? Just just for everyone is important. So again, I'm not a and also structure for if I want to make a new section if I work in the building like this. Okay, nice. Thank you, Ahmed. Next. And do they know? Uh, the yes, for every project, no? All these and we can. I'm Harold. Same uh, with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you work in the same place or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you work. You're uh, office mate. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, I'm Oh, nice. This is now maybe for uh, you need it for operation. Uh, actually, uh, I work in the gas. Uh -huh. So we are uh, taking about the drawings of the uh, medical gas uh, pipe system. So that's why I'm asking. So mostly they have all the Revit files there. Uh, actually, they have the other standard, I prefer to go for Revit. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Nice. What is your short name? Uh, Rafi. 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 Actually, I was uh, scheduled in the last box, but uh, fortunately, I have uh, some issue. issue of this uh, Friday. Uh, Okay, all right. We already finished, uh, I think, six. We finished architecture there yesterday. So, uh, Sir John? Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, John Mero Gomez. And I want to learn the baby because I want to. So, everyone needs. All right, thank you. And uh, Sir Pak? Uh, uh, okay. All right, so welcome everyone. I think we have a student who will connect soon, but he's not yet here. Anyway, we will we will start anyway and he can connect with us later on. So as I said. Earlier, every session will be recorded. So for some reason, if you are not available to come here, you can connect online. Of course, it's better if you're here because I can see how you your, your progress. And if you have some questions, I can immediately answer it. And uh, the good thing is also the lesson that we have as recorded will be sent to you within the week so that you can review it okay, for, for that reason. So usually for our uh, for our students, I will be asking you later on at the end of the course to uh, to present your project to the entire class and to the admin before we award your certificate of uh, of training. So our course is Revit Combo, which will be composed of uh, six sessions of Revit architecture. We'll have uh, three sessions of Revit structures, and then MEP will be another three sessions. We will not have any exam 
ACP, no, no written exam, will be focusing on hands-on training. So today we'll be doing a little bit of introduction and then sink in into our, uh, we'll dive into our trial of the subject. I'm now sharing my screen. This will be recorded. So when you open this sample uh, project in uh, in auto, auto, I mean in Revit, you will see it right there in your uh, interface. Okay, so you just click it and it will open. So you'll have the same uh, as mine. So today's uh, first lesson is about the interface of uh, Revit, which is very familiar with you because you have been working with AutoCAD for so many years already. So uh, there are very, uh, there are so much uh, similarities with Revit and, uh, and AutoCAD because the developer is the same. So some of the features of AutoCAD have been adapted by Revit and vice versa. What uh, you see in my drawing area is a sample. This is what you call a splash screen. So when the project is open, we have what we call a splash screen. It can either be a sample sheet or in in many cases, it will, it will just be a um a box showing the title of the project and usually the the logos of the consultant and if, if there is a contractor it will be included there this is the as uh, a splash screen so what you have at the top are the tabulated uh, tools and and commands and what you see on my left hand uh, side is the properties toolbar and the other hand and the below it is the project browser. So you can customize your your uh, screen by bringing in the project browser. You can put it here on the other hand side because because of the so much data that is included in the project, it is better to see it easily here. And also for the pro properties, it is better to have it here. It can be on the left, on right, or vice versa, depending on your preference. Okay. So Revit, the most popular thing about Revit is, is it, it is a 3D software. If you click this default 3D view, this little house at the top, you click that, it will bring us to the Revit model of the project. So everything that you see, that you will see on the project depends on this 3D model. So you will see something which is very familiar to you. If you are already working in AutoCAD, this is what you call the view cube. It automatically controls your view here. For now, it is you can see it in isometric. So, but if you click on the top here, we'll go to the top view. And if you click here, you go to the front view, right side, back, left. And if you want to see the bottom, it's right there. Okay, just make sure if you get lost, you just click on the house tool, the, the house icon there, and it will bring you back to this uh, view. And you can also freely move it by clicking your shift button, shift button and your middle mouse button together so that you can rotate it at your own uh, preference. So you can just do it like that. And of course, similar to AutoCAD, zoom in and out is using your middle bounce button and to drag it you need just to drag or pan just press your middle mouse button it will go left and right or up and down okay so as you know already uh, revit is uh, bim software so that means every detail that you see here is packed with all the information for example i see a uh, one window, if I click on the window, 
you will see the data embedded on the window, will be which will be here on your properties um, area. No? You'll see the uh, depth, the, the level where it is located. You'll see the materials. You'll see the dimensions. You'll see where it is recreated and more other things that you probably uh, need later on. So if you see some of the furnitures, if you click this furniture, it will have the same data that you need. Okay. In Revit 2023, the newest feature that is not available in the previous version of Revit is this blue uh, boxes. See, in the project browser, wherever you see the blue box, that means this box, these drawings or views are already placed in the particular sheet. Okay, so for example, the project browser composes of all the floor plans, 3D views, elevation sections, details, legends, and of course the sheets that are being printed for your proper use. So for example, if I open A102, we just double click on A102, it will bring us to the sheet where the plans are located are, are placed so you can see that level one floor plan and level two floor plan are here and going back to the browser under floor plans level one and level two is already ticked that means it is already placed in a particular sheet okay one character of vivid why they they use this is when you already have a view placed in one sheet, you cannot put it in another sheet. Okay, I will show you an example. For example, this uh, east elevation, we see it as uh, ticked already. It has the blue. That means it is it belonging to one sheet. So let's try to put it into the sheet. Just click on it and then drag it to the sheet. That's the way to put the sheet in Revit. But it will tell you that this view is already placed on sheet A105. So that means you cannot put it on the sheet. It says A105. So if we check A105, that view is already there. This is east elevation. Okay. So let's try to put some of those um, drawings that are not yet placed in the sheet so let's go to go back to a102 maybe we can put the north elevation it's still vacant no? so if we can just drag it like that it will already be placed in the sheet what is it i am in a102 I want to place this north uh, elevation into my sheet. I'll just click it and drag it to the sheet, just like that. Okay. Got it? Okay. Or there's another way. If you don't want to do that, you can go to the View tab and you can place a view in the sheet. Click Place View, then it will bring you to the available views that can be placed on the sheet. So in this case, I will go to Elevation North and add view to sheet. So that makes my life easy. Okay, so if you don't want to drag and drop it, and now you can see that the North Elevation here is already ticked with blue. That means it's not available to be placed in any other sheet. Okay, search, is that clear? Okay, let's continue. So what you are seeing is an existing project. Okay? Usually maybe in your projects or if in your work, you will be seeing completed projects just like this. So you will know already that some of these views are placed in sheets, in drawing sheets, and some are not yet placed um, for your proper printing. Okay? Okay. Yes, yes, they don't want you to duplicate. But later on, we'll learn that we can duplicate these views also. Okay? But just to make sure that one sheet, one drawing will not be on another drawing, drawing meaning one sheet, they did not allow it. Okay? So, um, 
let's talk about further on the project browser. So as I said earlier, what is under the project browser are the floor plans, views, elevation, sections, even legends, if they have legends. In this case, we don't have legends yet, but here we have some schedules and we have the sheets. So at the bottom, you can see families. If I expand that families, I will see so many folders. These are folders, okay? This is the library available in this project only. So if I click on, for example, casework, so I will have this kitchen island available in this project. What are families? Families are components like furniture, plants and trees, cars, lighting fixtures, plumbing fixtures, mechanical equipment, etc., etc., that you put on the model, readily made. Okay. So, for example, let's go back to the 3D. This window, this this uh, table is a family. It's called a family. So this uh, chair is a family. So in AutoCAD, maybe we call it blocks. Right. So here we call it as a family. Even the this is the 3D view. Okay. If you go to your project browser, uh, if you just click on this house, the default 3D view, you will see this uh, 3D. Okay, so we've 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 gone through the uh, project browser. Let's look at the other parts of the uh, interface you have also here at the bottom these are what you call the uh, um visual control okay at the first uh, part is the scale usually by default it is in one is to 100 scale for 3d it's not a big issue but later on you'll find out let's say in uh, in the floor plans let's say here in the uh, level one plan i will double click it it will bring me to the plan view. So by default, it is in 1 is to 100 scale. There are certain cases that you want to print in 1 is to 200 or 1 is to 50. So what happens is if you click this to 1 is to 50. So automatically, what did you notice? The, the text becomes smaller. So architects are very much uh, familiar with this because if you print it, it will have the same size of the text even if the drawing becomes bigger. So we don't worry so much on the text size and the dimension style in Revit. It is already preset right there. So let's just put it to 1 is to 100 up to its consistent. Okay, let's go now to this uh, visual control. Okay. So this is the scale, and the other one, this is the detail level. Usually, we want to always put it to fine, okay? Later on, you'll discover why. And this is our visual style. It is better shown in the 3D. So if I click it to hidden line, it will become black and white, okay? I can also put it to wireframe. I can put it to consistent colors, which is similar to earlier. And I can put it actually to realistic view where you can see the rendered appearance of the model. Take some time, usually if your uh, computer is not very strong, but usually that will happen. Okay, So you will have the, uh, the trees as rendered. This is how it will be rendered. And you can see some of the entourage, like the people that you place there on how they will look like. Because as you can see, if it is not in rendered view, this person looks like that one, okay? Revit is using this so that you will have uh, better performance. Your computer will have better performance when you are using Revit. So by default, we usually use this uh, setting. We'll put it to hidden line because that's the the best and optimum uh, option for you to be able to use your Revit properly. 
The second, the second one is the the sun path. Okay, the sun path will show you where the sun is located. Look, if I click sun path on, so that is where the sun path usually will be. It will show you the north, east, south, and west location. And this is for the shadows. If you click this, you will have the shadows on immediately. And if you click this, this is what you call the crop view. Remember this crop view because usually for beginners, this is where you usually make a mistake. If you click crop view, you will notice that some of the parts of my model is lost. No? But if you click this other tool, which is show crop region, this is what you call the crop region. So it sort of cuts the view that will be seen by you, okay? So now it is crop. The view is crop. If I click this again, do not crop view, it will not be crop. But this is what you call the crop view. The, I mean the crop region. If you uncheck this or click that button, it will not be shown, okay? That also applies to the floor plans. So this is, uh, the other one is what you call the unlock preview. Later on, you learn how to use that. We have also the temporary hide and we have the reveal hidden elements. Okay. This this is very important. If, if you uh, look at this, if you click the reveal hidden elements, you will find out that there are several hidden elements here, like the level view, this box. This is what you call the section box, one of the very powerful tool of Revit. So let's click this uh, section box and right click on it and say unhide in view. And now I'll click back on the uh, close the Revit hidden element. So I have now my section box. This section box allows you to cut your allows you to cut your building and see the interior of it now. Can be on the horizontal part, can be the, from the top, so you can see the building in its inside. Okay, so sometimes you need to see this and you need to verify what's inside the building, so you can use this tool. Just pull it down, that, and push it. Okay, so if you don't need that view anymore, you just go to your just yes, you go to your properties and uncheck that section box. It will go back to its original form. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. This is the uh, the view control panel. And now let's go to the tabs. So under architecture, if you click architecture tab, you will see the tools that you need in creating your building. You'll have the wall, door, window, components. Components are like families, like tables, and different parts of the building. Column. You have the option to bring an architectural column or structural column. You have the tool, the roof tool, ceiling, floor, curtain system, grids for the mullions, railing. You can create a ramp, stair, 3D text, and all the other tools. Under structure, so Revit is a very powerful software because with one software, you can create architectural, structural, and MEP projects. So under structure, you have the beams, walls, structural walls, columns, floors, trusses, braces, connections, footings, reinforcements, and all the others. Okay. Revit also added the steel tab, which is also part of structural. But this is mostly used by specialists, um, designers, and contractors. 
precast also is there. And you have the systems. Under systems, this is where your M, E, and P are. So usually for mechanical, you have the ducting, flexible ducts, uh, air terminals. And for plumbing, you will have the piping, of course, plumbing equipment, fixtures. For firefighting, you have sprinklers. For electrical, you will have the lighting, power, electrical equipment, devices, conduit, and even cable tray. Under the insert tab, the insert tab is your option when you need to link a Revit file. Usually, in uh, we will we will study linking a Revit file when we start to work on structural model. Then you have the option to link a CAD file. You can link a topography. You can import CAD file, load families here, etc. Under annotate, this is the two D option in in uh, Revit, you can create dimensions, um, spot elevations. This is one of the powerful tool of uh, Revit. For example, you are designing or even actually building your project. You can click spot elevation and you will know how what is the level of the pitch of the roof. You just click there, it will tell you what is the pitch of the roof. If you want to know what is the level of the of the contour here, it will tell you. It's right there, minus 2, 190, and all the other parts of the building. It is also very good for surveying, Mr. Surveyor, because you can click on the spot coordinate. If you click on spot coordinate, it will tell you what is the coordinate at the corner of this building, of this wall. Yeah, it's right there. So it's north, minus, blah, 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 and east, blah. blah. So automatically, it will be showing you the coordinates. You can also see the spot slope. Let's say the slope on the on the roof. So it's there, 962 over 100. You can see the slope. If there's a slope on the floor, it tells you there's no slope. So that's a flat, uh, flat floor. And you have these other texts which is mostly we use for um, sheets when we are preparing the two-dimensional sheets. And all the other tagging later on, you'll learn that. We have the analysis tool, which is a super, super powerful tool of, of Revit, mostly used by structural engineer, environmental designers, uh, mechanical engineers, lighting designers, and, and the like. Even we have the energy optimization, uh, we will not be discussing this, just for your information. This is mostly advanced level, and it needs specialist people to be able to, you know, to discuss it properly. But it is there, so if you want to learn further on that, it is available in your software. So massing inside, this is where we create this massing, the topography. This is where we place our, uh, our site components, such as trees and cars and people. We also have uh, the opportunity here to create the building pad, split the surfaces, surfaces and region, and you can create graded region. So later on, you'll learn that. So this is the sample project in Revit, and you have all of these tools. There is another tool, which is Collaborate. We don't teach this here, really, but uh, we have another course where we are teaching BIM project management. We are doing the sample there of how we do the BIM 360 or online collaboration where, uh, for example, you are working in Doha and you have an office in Dubai and in India. You can work on the same model if you are able to log into the central file or central folder. You can do your modification. You can work from home. You can work anywhere as long as you have the access to that uh, software, I mean, to, the, to that file. So this is where mostly most of those things are, are, are done. But we will use this interference check here in uh, Revit. This is like clash detection, but in Revit. There's another software usually used for clash detection, which is called Navisworks. Yeah. But in Revit, we also have now um, the function to do the um, clash detection. It is called interference check. We will use that when 
after we create our architectural model, we'll be using the same model to create the structural component for that same building. And then we'll start doing interference check. If there are some clashes with walls and columns, we'll find out. Okay. And this is your view tab. Usually, if you want to split the view, you can click this and you can tile the view. You can switch windows easily if you are looking for that to be faster, something like that. Okay. And this is your user interface. Sometimes your project browser might be lost. Accidentally, you might click the X and maybe the properties might be lost. Just go here, click that, and you make sure that you have all of these checked. Navigation, project browser, properties, status bar, and all those. At least at the very minimum, you should have this um, information for you to be able to work on the big properly. Okay, so that is our introduction to a Revit project. So after this, we'll be going now to your Revit project. We will be creating something already. Learning the different steps, creating walls, creating floors, putting windows, putting doors, putting the, the room names, and creating your sheets eventually. It's now, what's the time? 7.38. Let's take a short 10-minute uh, coffee break. We have coffee here, it's free, tea. And then after that, we'll go hands-on. We'll create your first project in Revit in less than two hours. Right? You will have something like this at the end of the, of the class, hopefully. Okay? Don't worry, we will not make a big building. It's just a small building. But uh, at least you will have something to make you happy tonight. Okay? Something uh, that we accomplish. Okay. We don't want our students to live empty handed. Okay. So let's take a short break. Can I need some help from you. ก็ยังมีการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการทําการท
Để sang đây nó sạch chưa? Cảm ơn lúc Cảm ơn tao vui Cháu đi mẹ à, là nó bị bình vui sao?
So, what is gymnastic? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Ah, <laughs> so let's start, guys. <laughs> sir. Okay, lang naman yan. So when you have an open file, open file, you can easily close it. Okay, don't exit Revit. Make sure you just close it. Okay. No changes because this is uh, I don't own this. Okay. So now we'll start a new project. Okay, you can just simply follow me. We'll click new. Thank you. And it will bring you this uh, pop out. Very important thing is make sure that you are creating a new project. Okay, sometimes you make a mistake, you click project template. No. Make sure you are creating new project. Okay. And then we will browse for a template. Don't use any of the template here. Okay, we'll browse for a template. Click browse. Then it will bring you to the template folder. Usually it will bring you to the imperial folder, which is not our uh, folder. It's mainly for the US. And just click one level up and it will bring you to the English. Just get English. And then from here, we will take default metric. I use the new one. Yes. Okay, again. Don't worry. I will cancel and we'll do it again. Okay. Okay. Oh, look closely, guys. Look closely. I'll browse. I will go to the folder English and under, under template. Open open or new. For new, I press new. New, click new. new. Okay. New. Okay, let's just listen. Watch, watch, watch closely. New. Okay, browse. 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 Go up to the uh, folder and go to the English folder. And this English folder will have this default metric. Okay, default metric. Click open. Okay. And may press OK. okay. It's different view. Okay, so we are in now. We will start a new project. Uh, section default metric. 
Okay, so this is the template. When you start a project, usually you will have the of course, your property is here, and by default, your browser is containing two floor levels, level one and level two, and the site plan, okay? And then you will have two ceiling plan also, and you will have four elevations, and then you will have legends, and you will have some families. If you click fam families, okay, if you click families, you will have all of these folder we will not look into it yet i will just expand it okay okay so our first goal today is to just create a small building two story or maybe three story building with a flat roof and the design will depend on you. You can be, be creative as you like. But just follow my instruction. Okay. So initially, a good way to start a Revit project is to create a grid. Okay. Just follow me. Okay. We will be creating grids. And uh, let's assume that our building have three floors and we'll have a roof. Okay. So let's start in the east elevation go to your east elevation you can now see that there are two levels level one and level two we will add two more levels okay okay so we will have two more levels to do that you just select the levels the two of them and then click copy here right there and then from here, from this end, move it up by 8,000. Type 8,000. Enter. So you already created level 3 and level 4. And escape when you're done. <laughs> undo again, again. I'll undo, okay? I'll watch it closely. I will select. Okay. I will click copy. And then I will click this endpoint. Okay. Click. And then I will move my mouse upwards. Okay. And I will type 8,000. And then press enter. And then press escape. <laughs> Go to elevation. I <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
Maybe you will ask me. I created level three and level four, but I don't see it here in the floor plans. Yeah. Right? So let's put it back, put it in the floor plan. And also an indication that the, the plan is not shown here is it is black. See, the other one is are blue. That means it is there. It is black. That means it's sleeping somewhere. Okay, so let's bring it in. Go to view. View tab, little now, sa iba bola. View tab, okay. And then click plan view. Floor plans. Okay, click floor plans. And then there they are. Select both. Okay. And then, okay. So now you see them there. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. View, plan view, floor plan, and you will see the level 3 and level 4 there. Select both and click OK. Okay, so let's proceed now. So let's go back to level one and then we'll be creating our grid. Okay. Simple grid. We'll just make three by three grids. Okay. At three meters. Maybe four. Okay. Let's uh, go to architecture tab. 
architecture tab, follow me closely. This is easy. Click grid. At the end, you'll see grid. Now you can create your grid. Just click once. Going down. Okay. One going down. Just like that. Okay. And another one horizont uh, horizontally. Okay. Escape. Okay. You have it? Yes. Okay, let's change the le the the number here to letter. The number two, double click it and change it to A. Okay. No, I mean level one. Level one. Okay. So this is the the good thing now with the with the grid. Okay. So we'll have uh, at least four grids, horizontal and four grids vertical. So we'll do the copy again. Okay. Select the the vertical grid that you made. Select, click copy. Okay. Follow me closely. Click copy, and then click anywhere on the line of the grid. Okay. Then go to the right. Okay. Don't click anything. Don't click anything. Can you follow? Oh, type 3000, enter. 3000, enter. 3000, enter. Escape. Same way here, click, copy, bring it down, 3,000, enter, 3,000, enter, 
3,000, enter, and then escape. So you will have this grid now. This is not AutoCAD. Okay? We click. Okay lang yan, sir. If you want to put the, the bubble at the top, what do you do? Click this and click the check there and uncheck it here. So it's now on the, on the top. At the top. Click this and che check that and check at the bottom. Click, check, and check at the bottom. Same way. Okay. So you can e easily rename the, the, the bubbles, but I don't want to do that anymore because it will waste your time. It's okay. So now we want to align it. If you want to bring this line above, you just click one of this line. Okay. And then see that small circle there. Hold, use your left uh, uh, button and then pull it up like that. Okay, next one, click this, bring this here, just like that. Also this, you can bring it closer, and this closer to the right, to have a nice grid. Okay, when you're done, when you're happy with the setup, select all, click the push pin. It will not move anymore. Yeah, 
So now we are ready to draw something. So let's just look first at our 3D. Click at the small house, which is the default 3D view. Okay, so when you're in the 3D view, the good thing about Revit 2023, it is now showing the grid and it is now showing the, the levels. So it's like you're in the level one, but you're in 3D view. Just like that. Here, there's a small house beside the letter A. Here. Letter A. And there is a default 3D view. Just click that house. Okay, move to the lang yan. Susunod na lang. <laughs> oh, adjust natin. Kasi dito sa level pan mo, nilagay mo banda rito, eh, di ba? Matagal kasi mag eh. Pag in mo yan, isa-isahin mo yan eh. Ganunin mo eh. Uh, oh. So now let's we are ready to create something. Okay, let's draw the wall. So the the process in Revit traditionally is we'll create the wall, and we'll create the floor, and then we put the doors and the windows. Okay, let's start on the floor. Uh, okay, let's go to the floor plan. So you'll not be very excited. Okay. Okay, go to the floor plan, okay? Now click wall here, and let's click wall architectural. Level one, sir? Yeah, level one. Okay, now you have the options to choose basic wall or you have other walls here. Okay, let's not make it complicated for now. Let's click generic 200, okay? So before you do anything, we will check first we will check first the constraints. Look here. Base constraint is level 1. That means the bottom of your wall is in level 1. Okay? And the second one, import, the second important here is the top constraint. That means the top of your wall is where? So we click this and we click level 2. Okay? So we'll be creating floor by floor. Usually in Revit, you can actually create a floor that is from bottom up to the fourth floor, but for the purpose of um, quantification, it's better to do floor by floor. Okay, so make sure that your setting is like this. You have level one and it is in wall center line and level two, now we can start doing something. So we'll just click here. Me, I will try to create like an L-shaped building. So from here to here, I'll do this and that, and that, and that, okay? And then escape. We have created our wall. Okay, don't go to 3D yet. Don't look at your, your drawing yet. Let's do the floor. Under architecture, there is floor here. Click it and click floor architecture run. Okay, so by default, let's use generic 150. And then by default, you will see this, that you are just about to pick the wall. So that's okay. You just have to click all of the walls that you created. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So once you have selected all your floors, uh, I mean all your walls, you just click this green check. 
there you already have a floor if you go to your 3d view now you will see that you have the wall wall and you have the floor already right there that is the floor you see like that that's a floor already. okay so now let's go back to level one okay go back to level one let's try to put some doors in window first let's put a, a door okay you can choose the size of door you want we just choose this big one and let's put one door here look at the door in revit once you place the door press escape if you select the door you can have you can choose to flip the instance flip it inside or you want to flip it going to the left hand side okay then let's put some window it's up to you to choose what type of window you want and then just place it here place it on the wall up to you be be free to put any any window so by you should have something like this now This is the most user friendly architect software. Don't worry. So <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, let's make it big already. Okay, let's make it big. Oh, uh, let's say you place all your windows already. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Let me teach you something else now. Okay, everybody's attention now. Let's let's use some of the two. You will learn two things now. Okay. Oh, ito na. We will learn the selection um power of Revit. So we'll select everything like this. Okay. Now difficult. Huh? We need to choose the things that we need to select and you click filter. 
Okay. Now we need only the doors and the floors. We don't need the grid. We don't need the yeah. We don't need the grid. We need doors, floors, walls, and windows. Okay. And then click OK. All right. Got it. Again, again, again. I will select. Okay. I will select everything like that. And then I will click filter. Filter. Remove the grids. Okay. Okay. Then click OK. Okay. Remove the grid. Okay. So now we will now just be copying everything and put it on the upper floor. Okay. Apply sir or okay? No, no, no. Apply and okay. No problem. Okay, so now we use this tool. We have this. We have the copy to clipboard. Okay, click copy to clipboard. Then, don't click paste. Okay, click the word paste and then the one with the arrow down. And then we click align to selected levels. Okay, click that and then choose level two and level three, and click okay. Enter. Yeah. There. Under the Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay now let's do something okay So this time you will just be just be uh just be creative you can add more window as you like because you have windows here you can just click any kind of window let's say i will put an extra windows here don't worry about the height for now okay just place them in 3d view you can easily place your windows okay and when you already have a window just select the window and then click this you can choose another window to replace it so it can be replaced with another kind just like that okay if you want to control the the height of it you can click this and you can change the value you can make this 1000 and the seal height will be adjusted okay so these are some of the tools of revit okay okay so if you miss this don't worry you can do it at home so let's try something else now okay so let's say we want to have like a, a balcony guys guys gentlemen watch this now let's go to level two we'll select the floor can you select the floor if i if you do this can you select the floor or no no that means go here Select, make sure you check the select element by face. Double click, okay? Mm -hmm. And then select the floor. Nakagawa ka na ba ng floor? Baka wala ka pong floor. Baka wala So let's add some one Let's extend the slab, okay? Oh, watch it, watch this. Oh, watch this, guys. So you have the slab. We will edit the boundary of the slab. Click this. Now when you see this, that means you are in edit mode. Okay, edit mode means the, the lines becomes magenta in color. So the very simple way to, to adjust is you just hover your mouse here, select the line, and then pull it down. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna do select the line, pull it down, and click check. Any any measurement? Yeah, any measurement. No need to measure for now. Just pull it down. And then... Wait, you just make sure you save the project, okay? I'll just put the... Uh, okay. Revit B99. Save us, sir. Yeah, save or save us, no problem. 
Yeah. Project plan. Now, now before you save, okay, click the options. Make sure that you change this backup file to just two. Because by default, it's it's giving you 20 backup files. And then click OK. Right click options? No, just click options. No need to right click. Where is it? And then save. Where is it? Don't touch. Save us. Okay, so we already have somehow a little building. Okay? <laughs> So we can do, um, we can extend it if you want to have like a small uh, uh, extension. Let's say we will again edit it, edit the boundary. Maybe you want to have like a shade you know, for the uh, building. You can just extend that you know. automatically in Revit. Once you select any line, this cross mark is coming that cross mark that means you can move it right away you don't need to click move you just have to hover your mouse near the line and it will move okay you will once this this uh, cross is coming you can move your line okay so for example i want it short here and wide on the other sides that would be fine maybe short here something like that and click check it's up to you. Okay. Edit, uh, edit boundary. Okay. So when you're done, let's look at your 3D. So maybe it's something like this now. Okay. So let's create a roof. Okay, let's go now to the roof. Okay, other modifications you can do later. Let's go to the roof. Our roof is actually level four. Let's rename this. We can rename the level. Right click and rename. Let's name this roof. Okay. And then just click there. Then click yes. Okay. You will have now a roof plan. Hey, you ready for the roof? I have only two levels.
Select mo na yung kailan ko. Para ko lang doon. Hindi na. Select mo yung floor. Si floor. Yan. 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 Okay, now let's create a roof. Okay, let's go to your roof plan. Double click roof plan. Now you don't see anything. Big problem. Okay, you're supposed to see something when you're in the roof plan. Okay, so what we will do is you go here to your properties. Don't select anything here, okay? Don't click anything. Make sure you don't click anything. Now we go here. Go to the underlay. See the underlay there? And there is what you call range base level. That means the underlay, what you see on the, level, on the roof level is the next floor. You click that, you should see level 3. Now you can see something. Base level, range base level, level 3. Yan. Nakita na? Level 3. Alright? Okay na. Meron ka na dyan? Oh, let's go, let's go, let's break the roof. Let's break the roof now. 
Oh, ito na. Simpleng roof lang. We'll create a nice roof. But um, something you will enjoy. Okay, so when you click roof, okay, under architecture tab, follow me. Okay. Click the word roof. Don't click the roof, ha? Click the word roof. Then we choose roof by footprint. You see it? Okay, now. Make sure you change the type of roof. Here we have the generic 125. Choose that. Okay, generic 125. And then, let's put an overhang. Okay, let's put an overhang of 750. 750. Okay. Seven fifty. Roof by footprint. Sir. Roof by footprint. Okay. Seven fifty. And then choose the. Make sure you choose the basic generic roof one twenty five. Okay. Everybody ready? Generic one twenty five. Amen. Okay, so now this time it's like creating a, a, a floor. We'll just select the walls. Okay, look. But make sure when you select the wall, that blue dotted line goes outside, not inside. Not like this. Not like this, okay? Make sure that the blue dotted line goes outside. And then the other one. Next. 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 And next. Take that. Okay, when you have this, you just click check and you created your roof already. Look at the 3D, you have the roof just like that. Sir, <laughs> Ito yung 
Okay, so now you have your uh, house, okay? Of course, it can be better, but don't worry, we'll develop it further. But I want you to have a little project at the end of the day. So let's go put it on the topography. Okay. Now this time we go to the massing and site. Okay. But first, before you click massing and site, go to site plan. Okay. Site plan. Let's draw first your property line. Under massing and site, we'll click property line. Okay, we'll just do a simple property line. Create by sketching and then just click a rectangle. Then we just put like this. Never mind the size as long as it is big enough to put your house in. And then click check. So you already have your property line. What line are talking? Massing inside and property line. Property line? Mm -hmm. Creating by sketching? Yes. Uh, click the rectangle. The rectangle then. So add. Oh, then. Okay. So we have our property line now. Check. Okay. So now let's create our topography. Topography is the soil. No? So click topo surface. Okay. Again. Massing inside topo surface. This one. Okay, click top of surface. Now we will click four points, four points only. Okay, one, two, three, four. Make sure it is away from your property line. Okay, click check. Place point. Yeah, place point. By default, it's placing point. You need four points. Okay, and then click check. Okay, this is your topography, but it is flat now. We want to make it rolling. So what we will do is select the topography, topo surface, 
Then click Edit Surface. Okay. Now select these two points. Just like that. And then we change the elevation of that to 1,000. Okay? Then select the, the two points here at the bottom. Change the elevation to minus 1,500. Okay? Then click check. Property <laughs> So you can use the name. And you put that in the Okay, so now let's make your uh, your topography nice. Okay, so let's add more contour because this is very ugly. It's not <laughs> one line, no? We want to see the topo surface. So what we will do now, under massing inside, click this little arrow here that shows the site settings. Okay. Under building pad, there is a small arrow there for the site settings. Massing inside. We are in massing inside now. You click this. This will come out. Okay. So change the intervals here at make it 250, 250. Okay. And then the increment here, make it 200. Okay. Change only the interval and increment. Okay. And then click apply. And click OK. You will have now some contours that is like that. And if you go to your 3D, yeah, you will see that you are already having a contour. Look. If you look to your right view, your topo surface is something like that already. Okay. So if you want to make it more dramatic, select it again. Edit surface. Change one of the corners. Let's make this corner like 5,000. Let's make a hill there. Make this 5,000. And check. So it will be something like that. And you can add more points. Look, place point. So let's add a new point here and there and there and there and here 
And here, if you want to make more, and click check. Now you will have a little bit of a, so at least around your building, place a zero point there, so at least you flatten the area. And then, so at least um, your building will not be sunk. Okay, so if now you look at your east elevation, look at your east elevation, you look like that. You will have a topo surface. Make sure you change this to fine. So it will look nice. Then the north, something like that. Change the fine. Okay, south, make it fine. And west, make it fine. Everything is something like this. Okay, that is your 3D view. Now let's put some trees. Okay. We can do it in the 3D view. Click site component, under massing inside. Site component, you will have all the trees that you want here. You can choose. You can see the height of it. So each of the three will have a height. So if you want to put it there, choose the type of tree that you want to place in your house, around your house. Okay, you can put big ones, put small ones, so that when we take a 3D view, it will look nice. Yeah. 
Okay, so once you have these views, let's go back to your site plan. Oh, watch it, watch this, guys, to make you happier. This will make you even happier. Go to our uh, go to our site plan. Site plan. Okay, we are in the site plan. And uh, go to your uh, um, architecture tab. Okay. Oh, sorry. Click this house. Beside the house, there is an arrow. Okay. Click that arrow and click the camera. Okay. After clicking the camera, make sure you click somewhere here, away from the house. And then click very far. Far away. Make sure it's far. Then click. Then you will see this view. Then adjust this. It will be something like that. You can still adjust the view according to your liking. Something like that. 
So you can have a view like this. Okay, when you have this view, you will go to your uh, view tab and click render. Okay. Let's click medium. View, render, make it medium, click printer, make it 150, exterior, sun only, um, okay, we will not render yet, just set it up, just close, and then make sure you click the shadows here, let's put the shadows on. Okay, shadow is on. Here, below here. Shadows on. And change this to fine level. Okay. Shadow yeah, shadow on. Now let's go back to render. Render, you, you already have the settings. Sun only. And let's put lots of clouds. Very cloudy. Okay. And then now click render. Um, you <laughs> Okay, after the third, you still have to do two things. Show the model. No, 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 don't click show the model. You will lose it. Okay, first, you save it to project. Okay, save to project. And that's the name, that's okay. Click okay. Okay, you can also have an option to export. Click export. Here, okay. Click export. Then just save it in your uh, desktop. Click save. Okay, now you're done. Click oh, close it now. Now you lost your rendering. Where is your rendering now? It is here now. There is a folder now for your rendering. Expand it. You already have it right there. Okay. 
At the success na na-install na natin. Okay. 